Hello everyone. Uh, this video lecture is a second lecture in the series of uh, engineering mechanics and this video lecture will give you a good introduction about the different components of uh, forces, how to resolve forces in different components and once the forces has been resolved in different components, how we can arrange these forces in a vector form and further we will also look upon the equilibrium condition the special static equilibrium condition uh, from the Newton's first law of motion that if all the forces acting on a body is zero then what will happen the body will not move it will remain in its static position so further we will also see some of the numerical examples so now we will look upon this uh, <coughs> we will look upon this uh, rectangular components of forces there are special vectors known as a unit vectors you might have gone through uh, through them earlier in your earlier previous classes what are unit vectors? They are the vectors that have a magnitude of 1 and they are along the specific direction. In this case, it is along the x direction or it may be along the y direction. We call them as a unit vector. So, a force can be resolved. Like for example, this is a force component. If we put this force component in a rectangular coordinate system, then it will make a component or a resolution on the x-axis and it will also make a resolution on the, a projection on the y-axis. So, if a force component is making an angle theta from the horizontal, then this component will be having the magnitude fx on the x-axis and fy on the y-axis. They together can be added in a simple fashion like a force component f is equals to fx plus fy. These are the rectangular vector components. Further, uh, just a moment. Uh, further we can uh, define the unit vectors which are majorly along the x and y axis so we know that we used to represent the unit vectors as i j k where i is a unit vector along the x direction j is a unit vector along the y direction or if there is another axis third axis k or z then the unit vector will be along that direction that is called as k. So in 2D we have i and j. So these are the unit vector. Remember that these unit vectors have a magnitude of 1 and they have only directions. So what happens actually they are coupled with the magnitude and together they form a vector. So, in this case, <coughs> the vector component as a whole may be expressed as a product of unit vector with the scalar magnitude of the vector component. As I said, fx here is a magnitude. Let me take a pen from here. Uh, fx here is a magnitude and i is a unit vector. So, together they form a vector fx. Further, we will be having fy which is a magnitude along the y direction and j as a unit vector. So, together they form a, a magnitude. I hope you are understanding these components. So, these fx and fy are referred to as scalar components. You can write the magnitude as like this also fx and then you can place these two bars in this like this. So, this becomes a magnitude times i 
is a unit vector along x direction. So this becomes your vector fx. This becomes your vector fx and place vector like this. This is vector fx. In a similar way, you can write a vector fy. Okay. So remember that these are the magnitudes and known as a scalar component of the vector f. Further, if for example, we have a three vectors originating from a single point, we call these vectors as a concurrent vectors. We have a vector P, Q and S originating from, from point A. So the resultant of these three concurrent forces may be a resultant vector R which is equal to P plus Q plus S. These are the three vectors summing up together. Now how this is done? <clears throat> this is done like this. So what we have done? We have added each and every component together. Let's consider each vector separately. Like for example, a vector P is there in this form like this. So P will have a horizontal component. Px is a magnitude. I is a unit vector. So this becomes a vector Pxi or Px. And then we have a vector this Pyj. So a vector P has two components along the x direction and along the y direction. Okay. In a similar way, Q has two unit vectors two vectors along the x direction and along the y direction, two components. In a similar way, this s vector also has two components along the x and along the y. So we have written all these three, all these three vectors and their components together and we have collected i in a separate, in terms of i and resolved the other two in terms of j. So in this way, you can say that Px, Qx, Sx times i, Py, Qy, Sy times j. Okay. And the resultant vector is also a vector having components in i and j direction. So you can say that Rxi plus Ryj. Now you can compare these two together. Rx can be compared with this part because i is same in both the equations. So Rx becomes equal to Px plus Qx plus Sx. Rx, Ry becomes equal to Py, Qy, Sy. Why? Because I am comparing the same equation in terms of i and j. <coughs> like this, what I have said. Rx is equal to all of these together. Ry equals to all these three components together. All j components together. We can also write them in this way, summation of summation of fx and summation of fy. Summation means sum of all the three vectors. Okay. Like this, as I said, resultant vector, these two components are there. <clears throat> Further, we have seen that the resultant vector can be placed like this. So my R has a component Rx like this and Ry like this. So what has been done now? These three forces P, Q, S has been combined together in a single resultant vector R which is oriented at an angle theta. And remember that this R has two components Rx and Ry and this Rx has further three components which is the sum of the horizontal vectors of Px, Qx and Sx and Ry has the sum of the vertical vectors of vertical components of Px, Qx and Sx. Okay. Once the resultant vector has been obtained, you can obtain the magnitude of the resultant vector by using a simple Pythagoras theorem. And using the slope equation theta, you can directly define the tan theta and obtain the theta or the horizontal, uh, the angle which is which is making with the horizontal resultant vector. So just remember these two equations. These are very simple 
equations, but these needs to be remembered because once you will be calculating the resultant vector, it is important to obtain the magnitude and the orientation or the sense of the resultant vector. Okay, let's move on to a simple sample problem. This is a very simple problem. Uh, this is a, a, a four forces acting on a bolt. This is a bolt and there are four forces are acting. And we have to find simply the resultant of the forces on the bolt. So what we need to do? We need to put the free body diagram of each of these forces. Resolve the forces first of all in the rectangular components, each of these forces. Then determine the component of the resultant by adding the corresponding x and y direction components. And further calculate the magnitude and direction of the resultant vector. Now how it is done? <coughs> these are the three forces. This was F1 has been resolved in the horizontal and vertical directions. F1 cost 30 degree because this angle was actually 30 degrees. So this was F1 cost 30 degree and F1 sine 30 degree. Just a small quick recap of what we have done earlier. This is important because uh, uh, as a student here you should be always knowing that any vector like this when making an angle with the horizontal, remember that horizontal component is always cos theta and the vertical component becomes sin theta. Okay, and when the angle is with respect to vertical y axis, then this component becomes cos theta and this component becomes sin theta. So, in terms of theta or the angle the vector is making with the horizontal. Cos theta is always with the horizontal angle that's, that is being made by the vector with the horizontal. Just remember that. So it will always be cos theta. So this is F1 cos theta and F1 sin theta. Okay. In similar way, you can resolve the other two vectors also and you can put them in a table. First of all, force F1 has a magnitude of 150. And x component is f1, 150 times cos theta, calculate this, add up here. y component, 150 times sin theta, calculate and add up here. Okay, then use it for f2, f3 and f4. Just make this table, this will be comfortable and easier for you. And then you can write the sum of all these components in the x direction all these components in the y direction. Okay. Now we have to determine the resultant resultant vector. So the resultant vector now has a component Rx which is this 199.1 this is Rx and this is very small 14.3 so accordingly a figure has been made 14.3 okay. Now I also have to find the what is the vector what is this vector this is the vector resultant vector I need to find the magnitude and the orientation with the horizontal. So we know by the Pythagoras theorem we can do that. Just square the two components and you will get the magnitude and with the help of 10 definition or slope definition you will get the orientation of the resultant vector. So you need to go through all these things because these will be required in the further calculations. Let's see another concept. Equilibrium of a particle. When the resultant of all the forces acting on the particle is zero, the particle is said to be in equilibrium. And this is what we are studying, statics. That means if I am, if there is a stone, for example, if there is a stone like this, and I am trying to push this stone with my hand, but if I am not able to push this stone, that means the force is not adequate to push this stone. So this stone will remain in equilibrium. Let's say there, there came one another person who tries to push this, push this stone with me. 
and then comes another person who tries to push this stone with me even after even after we have three we three people are trying to push this stone the stone is not moving that means that the resultant of all the three forces that we people are pushing on this stone is zero because the end effect is zero the the stone is not moving this means that the stone is in equilibrium so in that case i can say if this is force f1 if this is force f2 and this is force f3 i can say that sum of all the three forces is equal to zero because my particle is not moving so this is what the concept is this is what the concept of newton's first law of motion is if the resultant force on the particle is zero the particle will remain at rest or it will continue to move in a straight line at a constant speed that means the acceleration is zero so that is the same thing actually <clears throat> so if it's moving with the same speed it will continue to move in a same speed unless and unless and until acted upon by an unbalanced force this was this was the very famous newton's first law of motion is so this was the condition of equilibrium uh, in a similar way particle acted upon by two forces forces are equal in magnitude same line of action opposite in sense since they are same the particle will not move it is in equilibrium okay in a similar way we have three or four forces at a particular point we can make a polygon a closed polygon for these three forces which will yield up to a resultant this is force f1 f2 f3 and f4 this is a closed polygon particle acted upon by three or more forces we have made a closed polygon but the algebraic sum of all the three forces or four forces will be equal to zero the summation of all the forces will be equal to zero and why it is zero because the particle has not moved there is no work done so their components in the x directions are, are also zero and in the y directions are also zero. this is a very simple concept i hope you got it let's try to see a free body diagram of such examples like for example this is a truck and some material is being loaded on this truck with the help of these two people they are trying to load the material on this truck with the help of these two pulleys so just try to imagine the free body diagram of such a situation the important thing in this is not the truck or not these two people the important thing is this pivot point a because this is carrying a load in the downward direction and the two tensions on this string ab and ac so a free body diagram will be something like this where a force of this much amount is moving in this direction and as i said just remember that this is a tension tab t a b from the from a to b it is going from a to b so the tension is in this direction and this is ac in this direction okay so this is how you can make a free body diagram of the things here remember that the truck is not important or these two people are not important these frames are not important the only important thing is something that is in equilibrium because this this uh, this load has still not been loaded on this truck and this is being slowly and slowly being loaded on this truck with the help of these two pulleys so there is a tension on this pulley and all the load is there at a point a so the designing of this problem is important okay there is another problem uh, this problem is uh, in this problem uh, this car is being 
I don't know this may be loaded inside this ship or maybe unloaded in the inside from the ship I don't know but the important thing is that this car has still not been put on this ground or on this ship so it is hanging so now we need to find the equilibrium condition in this so this is the car we have a downward vertical force one and then this person is trying to pull this car in his direction so there will be tension along this AC and then there will be this pulley is there so there will be one direction of tension along this the diagram will be something like this so try to consider the FDP first of all so this is the FDP something very similar to what I made this is the overall weight of the car 3500 LB okay and these are the two tensions oriented at 30 degree and something 2 degrees to the vertical so we have three forces we can make a triangle we can make a triangle for this this is TAC just remember that the direction should not change if this is TAC the triangle should also have this direction TAC try to use scale while drawing these diagrams this is TAC at an angle of 120 how this becomes 120 30 plus 90 this becomes 120 okay this is 2 degrees from the vertical and the second vector is TAB 2 degrees from the vertical so from the triangular law this angle this angle is known this can be obtained so once this is obtained you can easily apply the laws of sine to obtain the these tensions TAC and TAB from this figure so a laws of sine equation has been written here everything has been written and you can take these two equations and obtain TAB and TAC okay there's another sample problem uh, in which we have uh, a prototype sailboat this is a this is a sailboat a prototype sailboat and this sailboat is being kind of tested on this flow channel and it is being uh, trying to be controlled at point A by putting a strip here AE putting a strip AB and AC okay this is a test channel three cables are used to align the bow on the center line so AC AB and AC A3 are there okay the tensions have been given for a given speed tension is 40 LB in cable AB this cable and 60 LB in cable AE cable AE okay we have to find the drag force drag force you know what is the drag force drag force is the force that is opposite to the movement opposite to the movement of the of this prototype sailboat this is a drag force because the flow is in this direction so and the movement of the sailboat is in the opposite direction so there exists a drag so if a sailboat would like to sail on this channel it has to overcome the drag force then only it will be able to move in this channel so um, uh, nevertheless these are the three tensions and this is my pivot point so my free body diagram becomes very easy okay I'll use this condition of equilibriums and try to solve the problem okay so my FBD is very easy now uh, this is one vector TAC okay this is TAB okay and this is TAE three vectors are there and since I need to find out the uh, the drag force so this is the drag force okay FD okay the angles has been given here okay this you can obtain beta and alpha has been I think given uh, in this so you can okay this needs to be obtained okay 10 alpha can be obtained by using 
these dimensions. So by using 10 alpha and 10 beta can be very easily obtained by using these dimensions. So you get alpha and beta here. Okay. And then in the vector form, the equilibrium conditions requires that the resultant forces must be equal to zero. All the three resultant forces must be equal to zero. So as a resultant, we have TAB, AC, AE and FD, the drag force. Sum of all of them should be equal to zero, which is it is, because the sailboat, this prototype is still not moving. It is being controlled by these tensions. So we have to write the vector form. So start writing the vector form. So this was TAC, the component TAC sine, this degree, TAC cos, okay. So I request you to <coughs> write these components and obtain the solution. We have written the components in IJ form. TAC also written in IJ form. TAE, where is TAE? This is TAE, okay. It has only one component, J component, axis 0. So TAE is only G, no component in the, um, in the X direction or I. And FD, FD has only one component in the I direction, FD itself. And this is what we need to find out, FD, okay. Now what needs to be done? As a resultant, you know, you can compare or add all items together. Okay, you can add all J terms together and find the Rx and Ry in this form. Rx and Ry. These are all the three components of I, all the three components of J. And remember that the resultant is equal to zero. Why the resultant is zero? Just look at the problem. It, the problem says that drag force at a given speed on a prototype sailboat placed in a test channel and this is not moving actually. Okay, this is in equilibrium. So, uh, we have obtained the resultant here and further you can also make a closed polygon of all these force component okay you can make a closed polygon of all these force component this is made and finally the equation is finally satisfied and the resultant equal to zero and the summation of all the forces along the x direction is equal to this so fd can be obtained and TAC, TAC is also unknown, this can also be obtained. These are the two equations, two unknowns can be easily obtained. Okay, so this is how the solution of the problem should be approached. Uh, so I hope this is very much clear to you what has been done. I request you to solve this problem by taking copy and pen and try to resolve these components along the x, y, and uh, along the x, y components direction and try to do it by yourself. The more you do it by yourself, the more it becomes clearer to you. Okay, now we will come towards a very important topic of a vector in a 3D space. So, uh, this has x, y and z, all the three direction and uh, let's say this is a any force vector f is there. So we have made a plane, plane B, A, C, O and on this plane we have a force vector f, okay. This force vector f can make a horizontal component which is f, h on this plane xz plane okay and it can make a vertical component on which plane yz plane as i said the angle which you take with the like for example this is force vector f 
if you are taking the angle with any of the axis, that axis with the angle becomes cos for you. So I am taking it with the uh, this vertical vector, the vertical component, this component F has a has a component of Fy in the horizontal. So this becomes F cos theta y and the sorry vertical and the horizontal component becomes F sin theta y. If this theta y would have been like on this with respect to horizontal then this becomes F cos theta y. Okay, I hope this has been already explained to you. The another condition is that this is horizontal force and has a component again let's see on the horizontal so this becomes fx on the vertical we have fy on the z direction we have fz so fx becomes fh is a component itself times the word and the horizontal one cos theta phi and the vertical becomes sin theta phi so what is important in this nothing everything remains same only one additional axis has been introduced because this is a vector in a 3d space everything remains same okay now the important thing in this is about a discussion of direction cosines okay so this is a vector in a 3d space so a uh, vector f which is making an angle of theta x with horizontal has a component of fx fy and fz along the x y and z directions okay so this will have a component f cos theta in this case it will have a component f y f cos theta y and in the z plane it will have a component f z cos theta z when this will be having a component when they will make an individually angle of theta x theta y and theta z along the x y and z directions okay when a vector f is making an angle of theta x along the fx theta y along the fy and theta z along the fz so they will be having f cos theta x f cos theta y f cos theta z these are the three components separate components of this vector f okay we can add them together to obtain the overall components fx i fy j and fz k remember that fx is only magnitude i is a unit vector fy is a magnitude j is a unit vector fz is a magnitude k is a unit vector all of them together f becomes common it can be taken out and cos theta x cos theta y cos theta z is this they can also be termed as lambda where lambda can be said as cos theta x i cos theta y j cos theta z this lambda is a vector and it is known as direction cosine name is direction cosine because it is giving a particular direction and cosine because it is using a cos term of the trigonometry okay we'll talk more about the direction cosine in the coming up slides so lambda is a unit vector along the line of action of f and cos x cos y and cos z are the direction cosines of Further, uh, expressing a vector in a 3D space is important, but something very important is also when the vector is not particularly originating from the coordinate axis. Okay, so this vector is actually translated to some any arbitrary place and it is not directly oriented from the coordinate zero axis so this is arbitrarily placed so it's important that 
this force should be coupled with a direction cosine unit magnitude so we need to obtain the unit magnitude of this force vector to know this there are many things written here but i would like to tell you something very important like for example we know that my vector f is equal to the force component f times the unit vector the unit vector let's say in this case is lambda so i don't know the direction of the force but i know that there is a unit vector called as direction cosine which is there for me lambda so i know to obtain any unit vector and remember that unit vector is look like this lambda and a hat on this this is a unit vector having a magnitude of 1 so to obtain the direction of this vector what you can do you can obtain this unit vector as force divided by the magnitude okay if you divide the force by the magnitude you will obtain a unit vector for any random vector on this time space that random vector usually is not originating from the zero zero axis okay and this is any random vector on this so to identify that vector i need to find out the unit magnitude and how will i find out the unit magnitude by obtaining the vector divided by its magnitude now i know how to obtain the magnitude of the force how how to obtain the magnitude of the force vector okay we'll talk this we'll talk about this more let's take a simple example and uh, it becomes more clear for us what we are trying to say this is a very simple uh, sample problem simple sample problem okay this is one kind of a tower uh, which is kind of connected to a guy wire and just see this this is in the three dimension this is one axis this is one axis and this is the vertical and remember that please look towards this problem very carefully with the help of this problem we will be able to uh, will be able to take up many concepts which are very difficult to understand from the book and we will also clear and take up many important solution methodology just look at this problem this is a 3d problem this is one axis this is one axis this is another axis okay you can give the name to these axis whatever you want the guy wire has a tension of 2500 newtons so this wire has a tension of 2500 newtons and these are some practical problems really like for example this is kind of a electric pole and you might have seen many of the electric poles around us are usually tied by these guy wires tension wires so that during the high flow of wind these these poles should not become uh, should not come down or should not damaged to do that so to give them additional support some guy wires are required what is required from this the force component fx fy fz acting at bolt a and the angles using the direction of the force defining the direction of the force okay so let's try to do this so based on the relative location of the point a and b determine the unit vector pointing a towards b okay so this is one axis and this is another axis remember that this a is at a distance of 30 meters from this so it has a distance of 30 meter so this force vector here is actually in a is kind of lost in a space if you see this my coordinate 0 0 is actually here 
okay and this force vector is lost somewhere in this space so i have to find out this force vector to obtain this force vector we need to know the unit vector of this okay pointing from a to b uh, use the unit vector to determine the component of the force acting on a that we will do another thing noting that the component of the unit vectors are the direction cosines calculate the corresponding angle okay so how we will do this now this is something very important coming to you how to obtain the unit vector just look at this this is 0 0 my i is along this x y along j or oh sorry j along y and k along the z direction so these are the unit vectors i j k now what is the unit vector along this f is lambda lambda is my unit vector which is along f okay now i have to find out a b i have to find out a b how will i find out a b a b in terms of i j k a b as a vector i need to find out not f i need to find out a b as a vector a b as a vector can be find out using these dimensions how just look at it i want to go listen to it very carefully please this is a vector and i need to find out vector a b so i am at a location let me remove this lambda first okay just let it be i need to go from a to b this is what the vector is vector is directing towards a to b that means it is going from a to the location b so how will i go i will move in x i will move in y i will move in z then only i will be able to go okay so you are standing here and you wanted to go there how will you go so first of all i will move in the x direction this i am here so i wanted to move in the x direction where is my x direction this is my x direction so i will wanted to move in this direction first of all okay uh, so this is against this 40 this will be minus 40 okay this component will be minus 40 i okay and then i wanted to move here i wanted to come here and then climb over this then i wanted to come here 30 and in k direction so this is positive so this is my 30 positive and then i wanted to move up sorry <laughs> these lines are very like this i'm using mouse actually so i wanted to move from here to here so positive 80 so this is positive 80 i hope you understand uh, i don't know i can rub this or not eraser let me do it again for you using a pointer options many of you would have been understood uh, but for each and every one it's important that it should be i wanted to go from a to b so to go from a to b i first have to travel here here and there or i can travel here here and here i can travel in z then in minus x then in positive j in any way you travel you have to reach here okay so let's travel first in x i wanted to reach from here to here so i would like to move this this will be minus because the x is in this direction minus 40 and then move along the z so this is plus 30 because this is 30 okay and then on the y so this is plus 80 okay so this becomes a vector and then what is the magnitude a b the magnitude is square of all these three terms this will become like this so a unit vector will be lambda will be 
this divided by this. Okay, this is lambda. This divided by this. So this becomes your unit vector lambda. This is along this force. I hope this is important actually. So please be very careful while obtaining the unit vector for any random force in the space. So if there is any random force vector on the space, you have to first of all obtain the unit vector for that. And for to obtain the unit vector, you have to travel x, you have to travel y, and you have to travel z from a to b. Okay. And while traveling, please ensure that these signs are there. Like I have traveled against this x-axis, so I I have put minus forty. This is along the z. I have put plus thirty. This is along the j. I have put plus eighty. Okay. So the magnitude is this after obtaining, and then we have determined the components of the force. So force component is F times lambda. And F is given to me, I think, 2500 newtons times the unit vector, which is there. Okay. And this can be written in this form. Okay. And uh, this lambda is like this cos xi, cos yj, and cos zk. So you can compare these two terms together and obtain the theta x, theta y, and theta z. Very easily. Okay. So your this AB is theta x in this direction, theta y along the y and theta z. So these theta x, theta y and theta z, theta z is making an angle of angle from the horizontal, from the vertical, and from the z, z axis. From the horizontal, the angle is theta x. From the vertical, angle is theta y. And from the z, the angle is theta z. And these are known as direction cosines. Okay. Uh, uh, th this is something, if I have changed something in this problem. So what are the components of the force in the wire at point B? What are the components of the force in the wire at point B? Can you find it without doing any calculations? So... From B. So the force in the guy wire must be same throughout its length. The force at B must be the same magnitude but opposite in the direction of the force at A. Force from this to this and this to this. Remember, if the line of action of the force is same, then the component of the force acting on this will be same. However, they may be opposite in the direction, like in this case. So always remember, if the line of action of the forces are same, their magnitudes are same, but their direction may be different depending upon their orientation. Okay. So I hope you have understood all these things. There is something all left of what FBA minus FBA. Well, this is something very same similar what we have said and discussed. Okay. So this is the line of action. Line of action of the force containing both the factors FAB and FB. Okay. So I hope you would have understood this uh, and I request you to practice this in your home. Please take some of the numerical problems and try to solve these things. We will meet in the next class. Thank you.